Hi, I'm Arthur Knight, and this is my wife, Miranda Knight. Are you Nicholas Rossi? No. Are you that Nicholas Alaverdian? Absolutely not. Are you Nicholas Brown? Yes. Police say this man has lived his life under at least 16 different names. They believe he fled from America to the UK to avoid rape charges in Utah. Then, in 2020, they were told he was dead. Just under a year ago, police believed they had found the fugitive. Bro, what is this fit, my boy? I mean, this is a Batman villain fit, dude. This is literally some penguin shit. Are you fucking joking me right now? What the hell is happening here? In Scotland. Pulled it over a lot of people, but he got fooled. Did the family believe Nicholas had died? No. He's not dead. He loves life too much. People who knew Nicholas Rossi, Nicholas Alaverdian, claim that it's you. DNA doesn't lie. I know my husband does not have tendencies as a rapist. That's the weirdest. Like, that is the weakest defense, dude. You just, what the fuck? Like, you hit the, look, if this is a real thing, okay, if this is a real thing, your answer should be, what the fuck are you saying? Like, this is such a wild thing to blame me. Here, I will take a DNA test immediately. She said, my husband does not have the tendency of a rapist. Like, yo, British people who do rape and pedophilia have the funniest defenses for uh, doing the rape and pedophilia. It's always, it's the Prince Andrew type defense where you're, it gets me. I mean, she's not even British, I don't think, or he's definitely not. But it's so funny to me that, like, they picked up on that tendency where it's like, Prince Andrew was like, like, Oh no, famously. Oh no, as you can see, on this day I was wearing uh, my non-raping shirt. This is a shirt I wear when I uh, am, am not intending to rape a child. It's like, bro, a normal human being would never craft that sentence. Okay? What the fuck is wrong with you? Or like, oh, I could never rape. I am, uh, you know, I, I do not sweat. Because I lost my sweat glands at the Falkland War. That's right. I don't sweat. Um, except uh, I do now. I'm sweating currently. But uh, there, was a, there was a moment uh, in my life where uh, I was uh, incapable of, of sweating. non Well, very capable physically of non but But uh, incapable of sweating. Just a little bit of non -sere. He's a con artist, is what he is. I call him a jellyfish. Because a jellyfish, you can't pick it up, there's no spine to it, but it has long tentacles and it can sting you. Uh, is he capable of doing it? Anybody's capable of doing anything if they want to. I just, you know, oh, I just, you found I'd it. be very happy though, just to see him stay and remain behind bars. These are very serious charges that this man faces. Dateline, dead man talking. That's the, that's, uh, I need to get it. I don't have an NBC Universal pr profile, so I can't watch it right now. But maybe we can rip it and watch it. They claim this man faked his own death to evade no. those charges. Did you fake your own death? Sharon, I, we're sitting having a conversation. I've never been dead to anyone. It's a story that began with an arrest in a Glasgow hospital, and it continues to attract international headlines. Rhode Island is more than 3,000 miles away from where the individual at the centre of this case was arrested. It's here many believe they've always known the true identity of the man behind the mask. Who is Nicholas Rossi? Who is Arthur Knight? Who is Nicholas Alaverdian? This is Cranston a small town near the capital of Rhode Island, where Nicholas Alaverdian spent most of his childhood. He lived with his mother and stepfather, David Rossi. The singer, who was an Ingelbert Humperdinck impersonator, adopted him when he was eight. There's Nicholas. Nicholas took his step- Bro, this entire fucking story is absolutely unhinged. Nicholas Rossi's DMs to Truanon. 
Um, I would be glad to help you with whatever you're after, but I can promise you I'm not Rossi. For whatever that's worth, it has been proved and it will be proven in court. But my wife and I have been through enough. We have been trying to escape this nightmare. It is truly bizarre. And I have no clue who you are, but I'm taking a big risk here, telling you off the record that arrest will be made and leave it will be named by 1st of July. Please keep that off the record. I'm telling you what I've been told. They simply want to wait until after the election. However, good luck in all that you do. Okay, there's an hour and 28 minutes uh, more than that. Sorry. There's like almost an hour wait time in between this. However, good luck to uh, all that you do. And don't hesitate to give me a bell should you need anything. Cheers. Okay, mate, your podcast is prejudicial. I am not Rossi. This is bizarre. What do you want? Tax returns, driving license, government documents. Why? Why couldn't you ask me for proof of who I am? I'm in hospital with pulmonary embolisms at the moment. This is the last thing I need. Well, I mean the relation, what is this? Oh, this tweet was deleted by the author. Arthur Knight, alleged to be Nicholas Rossi by David Leavitt, responds. Here's David Leavitt with Viktor Yushchenko in Ukraine last year. Leavitt worked with the U.S. aid. Dude, what the fuck? I never actually watched this. I never actually watched this True on episode, but there's like ties to the fucking U.S. aid. What the hell? Oh, my heavens. Just got rejected for a prom date, says Lieutenant Drip. Well, what the fuck are you doing? He said, I'm going to eat your dog. I'm about to ask my crush to prom. Wish me luck. I'll have to ask my crush to prom. Wish me luck. I'm going to eat your dog. I'd like to announce that I, everyone that I just got rejected from prom. Bro, you said that at two, nobody bit, and then you said it again at four. Keep your head up, King. And also, no, you can't eat my dog. Okay? Is that fucking uh, uh, Metal Gear Revengeance on your PFP? You are entirely too young to be knowing a game like that uh, if you're going to prom and shit. Metal Gear is a great franchise, though. I highly recommend it. Important for childhood development. Anyway, let's get back to this fucking insane video. Stepfather's surname, but the pair's relationship was nothing short of turbulent and at times violent. As a child, from day one, when I adopted him and his brother and sister, they weren't no bargains either. He was trouble. Hit his mother, hit his grandmothers, steal from the other two. Trouble going to school, want to run everything, always want to be in control. He, he just wanted everything his way. He was the devil spawn. I took a lot on. Three kids, her. Uh, I took on what no man would, I believe. But I did it. I loved them. I loved her. When Nicholas was around 13, he was moved into foster care, run by the Department of Children, Youth and Families. He lived at various group homes where troubled teenagers are placed under one roof. It was at this time Nicholas got his first job at Rhode Island State House. He worked with politicians, helping them with paperwork and other administrative duties. The most common word used by those who knew Nicholas Aliverdian during his time here at the State House was persistent. They say he was a man who refused to take no for an answer. Bro, he could have been George Santos. Brian. How are you? Nice to finally meet you. Pleasure. Former state representative Brian Coogan took Nicholas under his wing. He initially thought the teenager was a genuine hard worker who had an unusually keen interest in the law for someone so young. He kept asking me to adopt him because he was 
didn't have any family and he was in a group home and a foster home and he was gonna live on this very street, a couple houses down. Why didn't you adopt him? He called me up one day. He oh my God, this is the most Rhode Island Italian man, dude. What the fuck? Look at the rings. Jesus Christ, this man is, this man is, is so awesome. I mean, he's literally dripped out the fucking wazoo. He's got wrists that were specifically built naturally for uh, girth so he could uh, so we could fucking literally end up uh, becoming a professional arm wrestler. He said, Rep, you got to come down the court. You got to come down the court. They're trying to get rid of me. So I get down to the courthouse, and as soon as I walk up, he grabs me, hugs me, and embraces me like... I was the only thing he had in this world. I said, Nick, whoa, what's going on? He says, they're trying to get rid of me. You've got to help me. And I went in with the judge. And he said to me, he goes, see this file right here? He had a file on Nick. So all the times that he was telling you and the other reps up the state house that he was being abused, cuts and bruises, those were all self-inflicted. He goes, I can't let you adopt him. Brian decided not to adopt Nicholas, even though the teenager claimed everything the judge said was a lie. Nicholas stayed in foster care and lived in Florida until he was 18. When he returned to Rhode Island, he took his claims of abuse to the next level. This is where Nicholas Aliverdian returned in his 20s to walk the halls of power in an attempt to gain support for his campaign to improve the children's welfare system. And I was subjected to torture, beatings, assault in various forms. I was refused to contact anybody anybody at all. It was at this time he met Representative Ray Hull. Together they worked on legislation to improve the lives of children in care. Was Nicholas Aliverdian one of those kids who fell through yes. the cracks? Yes, absolutely. Or well, Why would he be advocating so much to make the change if he wasn't one of them Tonight that I fell through the cracks? He was a young, young individual with some tenacity that wanted Bro, what the fuck is this, dude? Members one morning before school when Nicholas wouldn't stop hitting his mother. This is literally the worst audio I've ever seen. It's also like dead man talking, fire emoji, mushroom, star emoji. It's like, who is this for? Like, is this for... Is, yeah, audio I've heard. Is, is this... Is this for, like, Zoomers? I don't get it. For sure he was going to rate me, but I did. There were a couple times I wondered if... Like, I, I don't really understand. Like, what fucking Zoomer was like, we gotta, we gotta get this Poggers interview out, dude. It's so fire. Huh. Well, I mean, the relation would be that you are in court proceedings that would see you extradited to Utah County to answer for a 20, 2008 rape that Nicholas Rossi allegedly committed. So whether you're him or not, there is a connection. Then how did you know David Leavitt was under investigation? Anyway. Wanted to change the world, and uh, you could really latch on to him. I'm thinking, wow, here, here, here is a young fella coming to us, I mean, our committee, and explaining why he, he needs changes in uh, DCYF. He knows it because he lives it. Around the same time, Nicholas was openly advocating against abuse. He had sexually assaulted a young woman in Ohio in 2008. So we met at... But, like, he's also on a court uh, in Utah for a similar charge. I don't even understand. There's lots in this incredible freak in our series on this Utah District Attorney ritual child sex abuse fake Native American Mormon bishop. The name Nicholas Rossi comes up frequently. Rossi's being extradited for a 2008 rape in Utah County by Leavitt's office. He faked his own death a couple years ago and once wrote an essay describing other sexual assault charges against him as his personal 9-11. Like, this is what I'm... Dude, this thread is insane. He now lives as Arthur Knight in the UK. Knight claims that he's not Rossi, has never been to the US, and is being set up. Here he is now. 
The document referred to by Leavitt in his press conference is a victim statement by the daughter of a former therapist in Utah County who was charged with a shit ton of rape, etc. Counts by Leavitt's predecessor, Sturgill. That therapist was Leavitt's friend and elder quorum president and also a member of a fake Native American church that administered peyote. The therapist also hypnotized patients who were sent to him for the conversion therapy by the LDS. All of this ties back to some way to the disbanded SVU in Leavitt's office. He abolished it in 2020, which left a lot of sore feelings. He's also being called a woke prosecutor by his opponents in the upcoming June 28th election, and Sheriff Smith has endorsed his challenger. Here's David Leavitt with, with Victor, uh, uh, Victor Yushchenko in Ukraine last year. Leavitt worked with USAID from 2008 to, uh, 2004 to 2018 to advise Ukraine's legal system and mold it into the American model. Conspiracy or overlapping conspiracies in Utah County. No one save members of the media have seen the victim statement. Rossi seems to know something, but the only way he could is if someone leaked it to him. If you can, please leak it to us. Arthur Knight, alleged to be Nicholas Rossi by David Leavitt, responds. The tweet was deleted, unfortunately, so we can't even see it. Rossi and Knight links to a host of documents posted by a woman in Utah in a reply to the thread above. They're pretty wild, if a bit difficult to parse in parts because of the redactions. One thing to keep in mind, Rossi was caught faking MySpace posts by a woman who successfully got him busted on sexual assault charges posts that would have exonerated him, so keep that in mind. I don't get it. I just don't understand what the fuck happened at all. At the, the campus cafeteria, he said, do you mind if I walk you to your class? So when me and him were walking into the basement, he starts attacking me, trying to kiss me rough against my face. He had his hands up my shirt, down my pants. Hey, and at that point, I ran up to my class and I was like, this is, I think, just the safest place for me to go right now. And then I come out and he's waiting for me. And he's, I'm so sorry, I got caught up. I'm so sorry, I couldn't resist. You were just so pretty and just giving me the whole line. And then I go and I report what happened to the police. This happened in January 2008. And he was then sentenced in May of that year. He gets sentenced. The, the judge does find him guilty in my case. He had to register as a sex offender every year for 15 years. And that part was hard for me because I was like, well, what if I'm ruining his life? Um, but at the same time, I was like, if someone could have spoke up and prevented what happened to me, would I have wanted them to? Yeah, I was like, let's, let's end the cycle here. Let's get, get it documented. Because I don't know why, but it just it felt very orchestrated and rehearsed. Nicholas was initially wanted by US authorities over one charge of rape in Utah, dating back to 2008. He has now been served with two more extradition requests from a state, one relating to the rape of a woman in Salt Lake City and another for a sexual assault in the city of Orem. Investigations have also been- I mean, this guy seems like an unhinged freakazoid that goes on like raping sprees no matter where he goes in the country. You know what I mean? He's like unstoppable force. And carried out into various counts of fraud. He's been married several times. One in Ohio lasted just seven months. Brian claims Nicholas's second wife never knew about her husband's criminal record and she told him she was abused from day one. He called me up one day and he says, uh, Rep, I want to take you to dinner. I got married. I said, again? I mean, because he was supposed to be married like three or four times. He said, I want you to meet my wife, Catherine. We met at a restaurant in downtown Providence, a fancy restaurant called Flemings. And talking to his wife, very lovely girl, pure as snow, salt of the earth, very religious. So we parted ways, and then they went back to Dayton, Ohio. She called me up a couple of weeks after that, and she was horrified into the phone. Nick was locking her in the bathroom. He stole her identity. He got credit cards in her name. And she was just on the horrors. I said, Catherine, I said, you call the police? She goes, I call the police. I'm going to get away from them. Gonna... Well, what was your reaction when you got that phone call? I was horrified. I couldn't believe it. I started Googling Nick's name, and I used all his aliases. I found him. He's a registered sex offender. He's suing people. People are suing him. Um, he's got all sorts of court cases going on. Nick's a weird kid. I said I would help him out with some money. You need to get an apartment. And Nick had called me. He goes, oh, can you help me out? Can you help me out? And I said, yeah, Nick, I'll help you out. Dude, this guy being like the mo the key guy in this entire story makes it so much better. I'm sorry. I know this is not time for like anti Italia phobia, but like it's just a, a big, a whole, big old hunk of man, a big old meatball maroon from 
you know, Rhode Island being like the most a, a, a narrator in this situation is, is great. And I just decided not to. Why should I, you know? I've given him money before. I loan him money. Never paid me back. He says, you said you would. I said, no, I didn't. So we went right to his phone. He went to my folder. He went to the date and he played it back for me. How crazy is that? So I said, I said, Nick, what is that? He goes, I record every phone conversation and I file them. I put them in a file. It's a dangerous kid. It's believed around 2017, Nicholas left the United States and traveled to Europe. Ray hadn't spoken to Nick in some time and then received a phone call from him to say he was unwell. At this stage, the state representative said he had no idea that the man he was speaking to was a registered sex. Yes, Big Shuby, I did talk about the court documents for Daniel Perry. He was literally chatting multiple underage women, soliciting nudes. I am familiar. That was last week's uh, coverage. If you would like to find out more about the Daniel Perry court case and uh, what uh, what uh, Governor Greg Abbott is intending to do, please go watch my video on it. I mean, not even last week, like two weeks ago, I think we talked about it, but. Ex offender facing further allegations. I get a phone call once or twice. I'm in Russia now. I have a, a sickness and he's gonna be treated. Uh, and so that goes on. And then I get another call, I'm dying. I said, Joel, you can beat this, you'll be fine. His voice was scratchy. It's all coming back to me now. He was labored. I felt kind of sorry for the guy, you know, and I, I, I encouraged him, I said, I'll pray for you. <clears throat> this is not the end. Uh, there were many other people who come through this and uh, keep your chin up, you know, you'll be fine. Police agencies were tracking Nicholas and had asked those closest to him to try and flush him out. Next thing you know, I have the U.S. Marshals coming to my house. I had the FBI from Ohio call me. I had the FBI from Providence, Rhode Island call me. And they're all looking for him. Was Nicholas Oliverdian still Marshals. alive? Yes, he was still alive. And he was calling me every now and then. And when he called me, I said, Nick, you got everybody looking for you. You got serious charges. He was calm and cool on the phone, talk like a lawyer. Oh, it's all a big misunderstanding. And you almost want to believe him. Where was he? Where did he say he was? I asked him. Dude, I fucking love this guy. I, I can't get over it, dude. I literally, I love this man. He is the perfect individual, dude. He's fucking calling me. I said, Charlie, what the fuck are you doing? You got authorities calling me for fucking charges. You better stop doing the fucking rapes or whatever you're doing over there. What the fuck? Where was that? He says, I'm in another country. I'm nowhere around. They're never going to find me. He says, I'm married with two kids now. I said, married with two kids? I said, what'd you do? Add water? What's it, like oatmeal? <laughs> that was the last time. time I talked to him, he called me and goes, rap, rap. I said, he looks like a teamster. Oh, he's, he's uh, most likely a union man, but probably voted for Donald Trump and is very excited to vote for him again. Nick, wh what's the matter with your voice? I'm dying, I'm dying. I'm in a hospital bed, I'm dying. I, I, I said, what's wrong with you? He goes, I got two weeks to live. I said, what's wrong with you? And he goes, he says, I have lymphoma. I have cancer, I have this. I said, really? I said, listen, you cockroach. I said, cockroaches don't die. I said, you're not dying. I said, you're a sexual predator and you're trying to escape and you're, you're you're faking your death. You are not dying. He goes, stop talking to me like that. I want to have peace with you. I'm on my deathbed. I said, and I was swearing at it. I was like foaming at the mouth. I said, you're a liar. I said, you're in a lot of trouble. They're going to get you. You, you can't fucking cockroach. <laughs> can't hide from the law. I said, you know, you know the old saying, the long arm of the law. They're going to get you, Nick. Live and local news and information on WPRO, Providence, a cumulus station. Sad news to pass along. A voice you've heard on the air here on WPRO. Nicholas Alberti, and he has passed away from a long battle with cancer, leaving his wife and two children. Nicholas Alberti was 32. His uh, passing is a very, very sad uh, incident for us. And uh, may you rest in peace, Nicholas.
Next thing I, I hear a call from his wife, which I didn't know he was married. She's asking me to present the official proclamation of the passing of Nicholas Alaverdian as a memorial from the State House official. Which you did? Of course. How do you feel about that now? Well, I, from what I know now to what I knew then, I feel kind of, you know, disappointed, but I, I would still do it again for the person that I knew who, who died or passed away. I would still do it, not thinking that he might have set this up himself. Attempts were made to hold a memorial service at two separate churches. The priest here was told to cancel the mass by police. Officers believe that Nicholas Alaverdian may have been vain enough to attempt to attend the service himself to hear the tributes being paid. What did you think when you saw that obituary? I was furious. I said, this kid is a con artist, is what he is. The obituary did raise a few eyebrows in Rhode Island and suspicion quickly spread. I visited the pub where Nick gains a reputation for his gift of the gab and drinking ability. The achievement of downing 300 pints is celebrated on the walls of the Wickedon. They had a nickname for him here. That's right, they called him Three Questions Nick. What the fuck is... Bro, what is happening, dude? Because Nick would just pepper them with questions. And then they had a house room. No, like, actually, what's going on in fucking Rhode Island? Someone explain to me what's going on in Rhode Island right now. We need to shut this shit down. We need to just literally figure out what the fuck's going on in Rhode Island in general. What is happening? No. It's like... Bro... I'm trying to not burp in the microphone. That's how much of a, that's, that's how changed I am. Okay. Anyway, uh, going back to this, like this guy, Nicholas Rossi is like this truly interesting, unique story of this, uh, prolific serial rapist, apparently who's now faking being a British man. And yet for some reason, like he is secondary as far as interesting characters in the story. Like, how is it possible that you go to, like, some random fucking guy at a bar and he just looks like this? I mean, this guy looks like... I mean, he looks like a, a founding father or a sailor. He looks like a lighthouse keeper, yes, for his profession. And then they had a house rule that he was only allowed three questions or they would cut him off. So he was known as three questions, Nick. Nicholas Alaverdian, according to everyone, died. Yes. Did you believe that no, Nick died? No, especially the crew here. They smelled a rat almost immediately. His name is Stephen O'Shea. These are the guys who are like, I'm actually uh, 11th generation Irish, but I went back to Ireland type dudes, right? Didn't I tell you when the, the, the obituary came out? Wasn't I the first to say yes, it? Yes, you were. You were. <laughs> what did you say? The wicked and bartender. Fucking wicked, dude. Nick's not dead. <laughs> Nick wrote his own obituary. I was more credulous because I, had been, I was contacted by his family to speak at his memorial. And his uh, supposed wife called me from Europe. The last time I spoke to Nick, he said he was living in Western Ireland. So I said to this woman, well, how are you doing in Western Ireland? She said, what are you talking about? I live in Geneva. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> but uh, she said, Nick wanted to, you at his service because he loved what you wrote about him. And I thought, what, what did I write about him? I've never written anything about him. <laughs> and so she read me this very full, uh, quote of fulsome praise for him and uh, 
I said, I, I didn't write that. She said, oh, well, no, no Nick, uh, Nick cherishes it. Cherished it. Do you doubt it all? Everything? Or do you think... I doubt, every, I doubt everything. I doubt everything. I have no idea. I don't know him. I thought I knew him, but I don't. And I, I certainly doubt every aspect of his biography that he told me. Over in the UK, a man calling himself Nicholas Brown married a woman called Miranda Knight on February 22nd, 2020, a week before the date of death stated on Nicholas Alaverdian's obituary. This man began working for a Canadian woman who's expanding her business across the pond, but things quickly turned sour. She now believes the person she employed was Nicholas Alaverdian. I knew him as Nicholas Brown. In January 2020 is what? when we started, and by the end of the month, I was not very happy. He, he... It's insane that, like, the Utah part of the story is, like, so incredible and psychotic. Like, that it makes this part of the story seem sane. Like, there is cannibalism, or at least, like, not real cannibalism, but, like, the mention of cannibalism. The accusations of cannibalism on the Utah part of the story, yeah. Peyote shamans and and whatnot, from what I understand. I didn't really look at the true and on coverage of this, so I don't really fully know what the fuck happened here. But I remember covering I remember covering like some parts of the story and uh, like a while back when it first came out in like local news and shit, where I thought you know, it was interesting. Um, but I, I never followed up on it, but it, it seems like Truanon did. He seemed passionate. Yeah, Nicholas accused the Utah prosecutor of... I mean, here, look at the fucking article title, bro. Look at this. Here, this is the Utah part of the story. Man accused of faking his own death to have 